for those of you who've never seen Vim, I've just recorded a screencast um, so you can see, see how it works. So yeah, Vim is the, the topic of my talk. Um, but yeah, you can see if this is all using uh, the home keys and, and keys easily within reach and never have to reach for the mouse, never have to use the arrows. Um, and, and yeah, this, the speed of this is not limited by Vim, it's limited by my decision making. Um, so who here would consider themselves a complete beginner, never used Vim, don't know how it works? Okay, that's good. Um, who here knows a little bit, knows a few things, but doesn't really use it? Yeah. Who here uses it all the time, loves it, or Emacs? Yeah. Sure, we include Emacs. <laughs> yeah. Command line it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay. So hopefully there's a bit of a uh, bit of something for everyone here. So to quote one of my friends, Vim is a terminal text editor basically what 90s hackers use. It's for autistic savants and no one else. <laughs> uh, I think this is the consensus on Vim for people that don't use it. Uh, people that do use it, I think, love it. Uh, I know I'm not, never going back to anything else. I don't know about anyone else, but yeah. Um, Vim stands for VI Improved, uh, which is a free open source text editor for Unix. You can also get it on uh, Windows if you have to. <laughs> um, Vim aims to minimize the number of keystrokes, and that's because it's based on VI, which was designed to be used over slow terminals. First came out in 91, uh, VI first came out in 76, so it's old. Um, so why should you use Vim or Emacs? So you can expect VI to be on any Plus 6 compliant system. So if you can use Vim, you can stumble your way around VI, so no matter which um, obscure shell you remote into, you're going to be able to edit your text. Uh, it's light on RAM. I'm, my Vim without any plugins is 2 meg with plugins 4. Um, so it's super fast and it, it's just super fast to use in general because you never have to move your hands away from the home keys. You never have to go to arrows. You never have to go to the mouse, God forbid. Um, so you can, you can scroll, you can select stuff, you can move yeah, you can delete, you can change stuff, you can do all these things because it's got blocks. So a word is a block, so I can select a word, I can select a sentence, uh, I can select a paragraph. Um, that's all because it uses blocks. A block is like a model for a section of text. Uh, so because of that, it makes it really fast to change those blocks. Um, and it has macros and repeat action keys. So if I want to jump forward to a space, uh, I can just do one key to, to do that. Space is not the best example, but anyway, you get the picture. Um, and so because of this, this method of uh, manipulating text, it's as if there's a layer uh, removed between your brain and the file because uh, all of this manipulation becomes second nature. Uh, when you use another text editor with a mouse, moving the mouse becomes second nature. So you think, what do I have to do? You move the mouse to the position, you use the highlight, whatever. In Vim, you think, what do I have to do? Second nature just does it. Um, so it's super fast. And you can get all those same shortcuts in the IDE. Whatever IDE you use, any decent one is going to have Vim shortcuts. Uh, also, a terminal page uses those same shortcuts. So anytime you look up a manual page, you press N to go down, you search with slash, you, you know, Q to quit or whatever. It's all the same as Vim. Uh, you can also enable Vim shortcuts in the command line. So let's say I have some text here and I want to exit out of my normal mode. I can go back, I can go forward, I can delete stuff, whatever. It's, it's all there. Um, and you can get Vim shortcuts in the browser. So I can scroll, uh, I can follow links, or I can yank. Oops. Uh, I can follow to any of these links. Um, yeah, you can do all that, all that stuff in the browser. So you can flick to your browser, you can yank a link, you can go back, you can paste it in, you can do whatever you want to do without ever having to touch the mouse. Um, so Vim is also very customizable. 
Uh, it's got this language called VimScript, which is horrible, but uh, gets it done. Um, so this, the, on the left, you can see that plus beside line 36. That's called Git gutter. That's a little plugin that I've got that will show me any changes I've got to any file tracked by Git. Uh, auto pairs will complete my my parens or my curly braces, whatever. It's very handy. Control P will search for any files in the in the same directory or child directories or tracked by Git. Um, you can change that to ignore file settings if you're using Control P and it's a bit slow. You want to have a look into that. Um, Vim surround you can surround a word uh, and then you can surround it with strong tags, for example. Um, you can get language specific plugins like syntax highlighting, linting, or completion, looking up docs, whatever you need, there's probably going to be a Vim plugin for that. Uh, also, it's, it, it gets updated really quickly these days. Ever since NeoVim came along, they've kind of picked their game up. It's very cool. You can also do these things called bangs, which let you run a shell command without actually leaving Vim. So um, if you go, if you have a look at this, I might put that in my set in my VimRC file, which is where all the settings are. I can hit my local leader, which is mapped to backslash T, and it will run npm test on the current file. Um, so it's super easy to, to run your tests. And you can SSH into a dev box that you might keep on the cloud, do all your coding in Vim because it's so fast, and uh, throw away that MacBook Pro that you just bought and, and get a, a nice, sexy ex-government Lenovo <laughs> with an escape key. Um, <laughs> so why wouldn't you use Vim? So maybe you can't touch type, that's the obvious answer. If you can't touch type, you probably, yeah, don't use it. Maybe you might prefer Emacs. Um, if you want to fire bat, it will be outside later. Um, so maybe you have an extremely urgent project you in two weeks. I wouldn't switch to Vim if I was you at that point. Um, so to see, uh, there's, you might be suffering from the status quo bias. So to test that, we'll do this thing called the reversal test. So l imagine that I'm proposing that you switch to a text editor, which will make you super fast immediately, and then you'll slowly get slower, and in about a week you'll be kind of just faster than you are now. In a couple months you'll be a little bit slower than you are now, and over the, the course of time you'll slowly get slower and slower and, and more, less efficient. No one would switch to that text editor. And that that's just shows you that switching to Vim is, is the logical decision. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. So if you want to uh, get Vim the terminal, uh, this is how you do it. You change your input RC file. I'll leave that in there. You guys can, you guys can look that up. Um, setting it up is here. That's where you turn it on. And this is where you do your key mappings. Um, in Bash, yeah, sorry. Uh, so let's say you're convinced you want to get into Vim. This is how you do it. First, remap can, uh, caps locks to control. That makes things very handy. No stretching of that pinky. Um, then you would small chunk your knowledge. This is very important. Start with getting in and out of insert mode. So Vim has modes in which you, one is when you put in text, another one is where you move around, another one is where you highlight text. Right now I'm in normal mode. And if I press I, I go into insert mode and I can type stuff. Um, so learn how to get in and out. I goes in before the cursor, A goes in after the cursor. Escape goes back to normal mode. Um, left is H, right is L, up is K, and down is J. This is the hardest thing about learning Vim. J goes down and K goes up. If you can remember that, you're sorted. Um, one way to help with that is to enable uh, Vimium in the browser and just use that. You'll pick it up pretty quickly. So once you have put those few things into your muscle memory, then you can learn a few more things. You can learn how to move forward a bit further, like say by word, or back, or you can go to the end of the line, or you can go to, to a paragraph, uh, or you can go to a line. You can jump forward to a certain character, a symbol. You can repeat that command. You can search. 
Uh, yeah, all these things, once you learn them, integrate them, learn something new. Uh, and, and pretty soon you, you won't need a list to follow, you'll just think, oh, I wonder how I can do this, and guaranteed there'll be some way that's super easy. Uh, yeah, so then you can keep, keep going with your learning, you learn to use the clipboard, get some plugins. Uh, the way that I did all this was by peep code, uh, smash into Vim. But there, there are other really good uh, resources out there. This open Vim tutorial is pretty good. This turns Vim into a game, Vim Adventures. Uh, this is, an, Alex got this, this is a nice keyboard cover that will give you little hints about what keys do what. Um, but I haven't seen him using it lately, so maybe you shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> so, let's say you've started with your Vim and you want to get faster. Well, get faster at touch typing. Uh, if you're weak at certain characters, put them in your password. Um, I'm not so good with numbers, so one thing that I'm doing is I put all kinds of numbers in my passwords and I turn on this link filtering in, in Vimium which puts numbers over all my links. The idea behind that is that you can start typing the, the text that's in the link and will go straight to that link and then you can see it enter and it will go there. But uh, if you don't type anything it just brings up numbers and so you can get better at, at training numbers. Also you can disable your crutch keys. You can uh, map any key that you use a lot map to this uh, NOP uh, and, and that will stop you using that key, start with your arrow keys. I'm at the point now where I'm going to unmap my, my HJKL keys because I find myself doing this and I shouldn't be doing that. That's a sign that it's a crutch, so get rid of those keys. You can always go forward by word, you can jump to a line, you can do anything without holding down any key or pressing it multiple times. Uh, install Vim on the Chrome, Chrome browser, um, yeah, and enable that, I talked about that. So uh, I've got my VimRC file, which I can show you guys if you're interested. I didn't actually start the timer, I don't know how long I'm going for, I'll go to the end if, I'm, if we've got time. Um, so some tips, um, so definitely do at least the first half of learn Vim script the hard way. That goes through a lot of the common settings that you use in your VimRC file. Um, and yeah, you just understand Vim a lot more. And you can keep going if you want to write your own plugins or do some cool stuff. Like I wrote a, a few lines of code in my VimRC that helped me uh, look at my guitar tabs. So I can turn on auto scrolling. Uh, I can just, over, whenever I hit, hit a number, it, it overwrites my, my dashes or whatever. I can show you that too if we have time. Um, yeah, remap JK and KJ to escape. So that's super common, is escaping from insert mode. If you just mash those keys, you'll just get out of there super quick. Um, capital H and capital L make a lot of sense to me to go to the start or the end of the line. And the, the dollar sign and the carrot, which typically do this as a bit of a stretch, don't really like it. Uh, you can remap the defaults to those to, to use a leader key if you want. You can also do shell loops in Vim. This is a little trick that I learned the other day. So you might, in a, in a terminal, you run your command, list the files, pipe it into Vim, then you manipulate that list, and uh, just use a regex, or you can do it manually if you want, and then you send it back to the shell. So you can, yeah, you can do a for loop, and you can use that to debug a for loop if you want, but. It's a much, I think it's an easier way to, you don't have to look up the syntax of the for loop if you never use it. Um, yeah, I would suggest that. Uh, I would suggest looking into mode lines if you, if you use Vim a lot. You can, instead of setting a file to read only, you can set it to no modifiable in your mode line, and that will warn you before you start making changes rather than when you go to save. So if you want to learn Vim script, learn Vim script the hard way. Uh, and, and yeah, all these notes, you can find them on, on my GitHub, which is uh, Jazzabini. Um, the repo's there, my dot .files repo's there. Uh, how are we for time? Do you want to look at some VimRC? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so this is my VimRC. This is the basic settings. I use a, a package manager, plugin manager to called Pathogen, but uh, Andre uses Vundle, and he seems to like it, so I think he's right, so I might switch to that. Um, 
this is just some basic settings about uh, you know the the behavior and the look of uh, of Vim. Uh, what else we got? So I like uh, relative number. So that will change your numbers like like so. So it's relative to the current line. So you can you can say I'm going to go six up or I'm going to go eleven down. You go straight to those lines. Um, that's kind of the the best way that I found navigating, and that's why I'm going to remove the the mapping of my HJKL keys, so I can use that instead. Because that only in in normal mode would you remove the, that mapping, because so it will still work in operator pending mode. Um, highlight search means if you search for uh, this one, for example, or this one. Oops. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to highlight your matches, or it's going to highlight your matches like this. Uh, paste mode, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that makes it easier to paste, but it's, it's kind of a pain. So I'm in the process of sorting that out in my, my files to turn it on, then paste, and then turn it off. But I haven't got around to that. You'll see later. Um, column color will, will put a, a, a little color at the end of, at the column that you specify. So, you know, we're supposed to keep our lines less than 80 characters or whatever it is, and, and that helps you do that. Um, what else we got? Um, file specific. So you might have auto groups. So these are all my auto groups. So say for JavaScript, uh, So before I write any JavaScript file, so that's this line. Anytime I write uh, a .js file, it's going to do a regex for any white space followed by end of line, and it's going to delete that. Um, that's really handy. So you can see I'm about to add syntax highlighting for the word yield in JavaScript. Um, right here, I've put a, a mapping in so that I can comment out a file and uh, and you can see here, I'm going to put D colon as the first uh, the first line of the comment, and then when I save the file with ZZ save and quit, it's going to remove all those lines, so I can mark them for deletion later. You can do lots of cool stuff like that. Um, in my guitar tabs. I can set it to not wrap automatically. I set it to overwrite text with with numbers. So uh, let's have a look at a file. So if I hit my leader key and A, it's going to auto start scrolling. Uh, and then I can, I can set, I've written it to take that speed into account. Um, anytime I type numbers, it automatically overwrites whatever's there, which is not standard Vim behavior. Uh, so you can do all, all any, anything you want to do, you can do in Vim. Um, it's, yeah, that's why I recommend learn Vim script the hard way. That'll sort your dot files out to be just like this. Um, the first half of that will, and that will that will take you, I don't know, a few weeks, depending on how how aggressive you do it. Um, and if you really want to dig into uh, plugins and write something like like my guitar tab stuff, then complete the the uh, the tutorial, and yeah, yeah you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, Vim is really not that hard to, to learn. Everyone thinks it's this crazy thing. It's, it's not. It's just, as I said, the hardest thing is, is J's down and K's up. Yeah, cool. Well, that's it. That's Vim. Get into it. <laughs>